Okay, so here we are in Carbide Create. We're going to design our uh, serving plate, <clears throat> and we're going to uh, uh, incorporate a little uh, dipping bowl, store-bought dipping bowl. And uh, so let's go ahead and start this off with defining stock. So I've got some mahogany, and uh, it's 16 inches wide. It is 7 and a quarter tall, and it is 780 thousandths thick. I'm going to home out in the lower left and uh, use all my standard stuff here. So uh, even though I'm on the mill right, Shipoko 3, eighth inch retract height, and then we're going to work in inches. <clears throat> so here we go. Stock is set up. So the first thing I want to do is sort of, um, this is going to be a, a very general sort of rectangular shape. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in here. Uh, I'm going to say my width is, since I've got 16 inches worth of stock, uh, I'm actually going to have a little handle on this as well. So we're going to go ahead and make this um, 11 inches by 6 inches. And then uh, we will go ahead and go ahead and fill it these corners with a radius of um, 375. Actually, the outside fill it doesn't really matter, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that now uh, since we'll be offsetting this. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and align this, and I'm going to align the stock, and I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go left side, why did it do that? Left side, there we go, and, and center, nope, and left side, there we go. And so now, um, so I don't want it all the way up against the edge of the stock here, so I'm just going to, since it's already selected, I'm just going to right mouse arrow over a bit, and there we are. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to make a couple of segments inside here. So, um, I will, <coughs> I think probably the easiest thing to do is to a copy and paste. And what I'm going to do is delete that, and I'm going to go ahead and offset this to the inside, a quarter of an inch inside, apply. And then I'm going to transform this, and I'm going to make this box just a hair smaller. So since we made it um, 11 inches long total, this box, uh, I don't want to go right down the middle of it. I'm actually going to go um, at 5 inches. Set there. Apply and done. And... I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that, and I'm going to move this guy over. And I'm going to go ahead and center both of these vertically with the last thing I picked, which is this shape. And so align to last selection dot align. So that was the last thing I selected. So it's going to it's going to make sure that these two guys relative to the outside box are centered up and down. There we go. <laughs> and now, right in the center of this guy, I know I want to have um, the little dipping cup. And I'm going to make its own little recess in here. And I know that the radius on this is 1.35 inches. So the diameter is 2.7. So again, I'm going to go ahead and have that selected and then select the outer box and make sure that it is centered with that. And then I'm going to go ahead and... Um, offset this guy by a quarter of an inch to the outside. And now what that's going to allow me to do is go ahead and select everything here. And I'm going to come down here to Trend Vectors. And I'm going to scroll on in here. I'm going to get rid of where these overlaps are. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that and that. I don't need this line or this line. And I don't need this line or this line or that line. And now it's telling me there's nothing left, so get it. It's all co-joined now. Hit OK. So now I've got my basic tray here. So this is going to be a, a recessed area. This will be a recessed area. Um, and now I want to add the handle. And so for the handle, what I want to do is just a simple circle, I think. And I'll come out this way, and I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, that's, that's huge. Oh, 
let's probably we'll call this uh, yeah one point one two five, and I'm going to center that with the stock up and down, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see here. If I want to create a couple of straight lines coming out here. Actually, you know what, the, the better thing to do, if you want to do something like that, is actually make a box. And we'll make it, it says it's 5 width, it doesn't really matter, the height is 2, we'll call this, well, we'll go 2.25. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone there for now. So now what I'm going to do is make sure that this guy is aligned center with what I just selected. So there we go. And then uh, select him. And we're going to do a fillet. And we're going to round the corners. And these are going to be um, pretty big. Let's do a, a one inch radius and see how that looks. And I didn't do that right. Let's try it again. So you need to pick that corner and pick that corner. And um, that's pretty good. I think I like that. So now all we have to do is pick this, this and this, and we'll go back and we'll trim those vectors again and get rid of the stuff we don't want. So we don't care about this or this. So it's a bit of a smaller handle, but that's okay. Uh, this will actually allow us to uh, center this up just a tad better. There we go. And now we can get into our tool paths. <clears throat> so I always like to start with my uh, my bull bit first. That's what I'm going to be using. And I'm going to start with uh, this guy here. So we're going to select that. We're going to do a pocket. We're going to come on down here and we're going to do... Uh, my, find my bull bit. It's a three-quarter inch bull bit. Two flutes. Um, I'm going to reduce the step over to something like 300 thou. Depth per pass is 50 thou. I'm running a fee rate of 100 inches per minute. And I'm generally running this just for your reference because it doesn't really matter what you type in here. But I usually run that at 18,000 RPM. And um, <clears throat> we're going to go to a max depth of... This does not need to be very deep. It only really needs to be about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to say max depth of 125 thou, or an eighth of an inch. Uh, and I'm going to say OK, but I'm going to leave that selected, and I'm going to do that same that same one. And I'm going to say my starting depth, the same bit, my starting depth is an eighth of an inch, and I'm going to come down another ten thou. And what I'm going to do here is just reduce the step over to something small, like two hundred thou and leave everything else the same. So that's going to take that last sort of ten thousandths of an inch off and um, uh, actually I'm going to introduce that down to five thousand. And uh, just, just make it super smooth and really reduce the need for any sanding. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and drop this step over all the way down to an eighth of an inch. Because at a hundred inches per minute, it's going to get done with that little area really, really quick. And leave me much less sanding to do. So okay. So again, right, it's under two minutes to do that, that whole little pocket there. Now we're going to go ahead and select these two insides. And it's not lichen, but those vectors aren't closed. So when you highlight that, and this area is not connected with it, then you need to, uh, not trim, sorry, you need to join vectors. So now it sees this whole part as one piece. Let's see if this other side... Yeah, this other side still needs it as well, so we're going to go ahead and join those vectors. So now we've got a, a solid shape here that we can select. Tools, we're going to pocket it again. We're using the same bit. We're going to start at zero, and this time we're going to go down to 290 thousandths. And again, we're going to have this step over at something like 300 thou. And hit OK. And then we're going to do one more pocket. With that, with that stuff still selected here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to run a finishing pass. Starting depth is 290 thou. 
and uh, we're going to go to 295,000. So we're just taking off that five thousandths of an inch. And again, we're going to drop this down to something small, like 125. So the step over is really small. And that should really, really help out with uh, the appearance of tool marks in any sand. And then the last tool path we're going to run here is a contour to cut this sucker out. So we're going to swap out our bits here. And I'm going to select this kind of the Shapoko uh, hardwood section. Doesn't really matter which one, but uh, end mill 205. Uh, it's a two flute up cut. And generally the feeds and speeds are pretty good. I'm going to leave this at 90 thou. Step over doesn't matter. Um, 60 inches per minute is good. And we can see that it did not get that one. So we're going to pick that part two. And we're going to, we're going to cut to the outside. And we're going to go to the stock bottom here. So we're going to cut all the way through. And let's throw in some tabs. Uh, I like doing a quarter inch tabs. And I'm just going to pick here and here and here and here. <coughs> no, not there. Not, not that close to the edge. And OK, and OK. Now proof's in the pudding, so we're at sitting at um, two minutes, two minutes, so probably only two minutes total here. Seven, eight, we're at 15 minutes. Let's show this simulation. And so this is what happens when those vectors aren't joined. And so you'll get a cutting here where it's going to come along and doink, and doink, because those vectors aren't joined. So we need to come back here since we've already got them selected. But basically, same thing as when we pick that. This guy doesn't get picked, so we hold shift, hold that, join those vectors. Now let's go check our tool path one more time. So now we're down to five minutes, and we'll show this simulation one more time. And, yep, there we go. Much better. So those are all gone. Now it did add tabs in weird spots. Those are not the tabs that I chose. So we're going to clear all tabs. And let's go ahead and put them back in where we want them. In here, and put them here. And OK. And last time... And there we go. So that's going to look pretty cool. So a nice little recessed area here. And again, since I'm using the bull bit, the radius around the, the inside corners are going to be, um, or there will be a radius inside those corners. And the fillet that I added uh, to these corners is going to be not quite as sharp. It'll be a bit shallower because it's a three-quarter inch hit. So it's going to, it's going to round those over just a, just a hair more. So now we can export this thing. So we're going to disable the contour for now. And we're going to export just the pocketing stuff because it's all the same bit. So save key code. Okay, so I'm going to call on this one the Linda. So we're going to do this one. Bold cuts. Just like the haircut we used to get when we were growing up. And then we're going to hide all the pockets or disable all the pockets. The bull bit stuff. Because we're going to do a tool change and we want to enable the contour. So we'll go ahead and do that one and we'll say contour. And now we are ready to run. So let's go uh, put it on the CNC. Super smooth. Okay, so we're set up for the, the final cut. We're going to do a test fit. Nice. So, looking really good. Just going to do a little bit of sanding, hit these edges with the router table to smooth them out and round them over, otherwise it looks really good. Then we'll uh, hit it with some finish. 